Kia ora, hello. The purpose of this video is to provide some tips for completing the Arms Trade Treaty grant application form in order to maximise your chances of success. We will focus on four key parts of the form, sections 4, 6, 8 and 9. If you wish, you can choose to work with a partner to help implement your project. If you do choose to have an implementing partner, it is a good idea to agree at the outset how your relationship will work. For example, who will be responsible for what and who will receive and manage the funds. Section 6 is where you should explain your project in detail. In 6.4, you should explain how your project will improve ATT implementation and why you've decided to prioritise this particular project now. In 6.7, you must outline a clear step-by-step -step plan for how you will implement the project. This section should be detailed enough to show that you've identified all the steps needed to complete the project. For example, if the project involves a workshop to build capacity of customs officials on ATT implementation, it might be broken up like this. It's important that the cost associated with each phase or activity is aligned with your budget form. If the project does involve a workshop, you should indicate how you will select participants. In 6.9 and 6.10, we want to know about the long-term value and effects of the project. So, using the earlier example of a customs workshop, the expected impact could be that 25 customs officials have increased capacity to identify ATT-controlled items and prevent their diversion to unauthorised users. If you have been involved in a previous ATT project, then you should explain how this project will build on it in section 8.3. In 9.1, you should identify and describe any risks or uncertainties that could impact the project. Applicants should not be shy about identifying potential risks. The selection committee simply wants to see that you have thought through the challenges the project could face and how you might deal with them if they arise. Examples of risks that projects may face include that the cost may be higher than estimated, suppliers go out of business or there's a change in government. In 9.2, we want to know what you will do to avoid or reduce the risks you have identified. In sections 9.3 and 9.4, you should provide a description of how you intend to manage the project during its life cycle and how you will know if the project achieved its aims. Thanks for taking time to learn more about the grant application form. Further information is available online or by contacting the ATT Secretariat. We wish you every success with your application.